Hey guys, I want to take a minute to introduce you to Belle, my eight-year-old female lab. Uh, Belle is a shed antler dog trained by Roger and Sharon Sigler at Antler Ridge Kennels in Kansas City, Missouri. They were featured in North American Whitetail the year before I bought her. I read their article and was just really intrigued by their, their training program and their success of producing really good quality antler dogs. I ordered Belle as a puppy and picked her up when she was about three months old and they laid a fantastic foundation through the reward-based training that I basically just built on and just exercised her over the, the, you know, the years following that and just developed her into a really awesome shed dog. Not to mention she's just the best sweetheart we've ever had of a, of a pet. Some of the early training things that they start these puppies at a really young age, four to six weeks of age, the, the very first thing they do is, is take a tennis ball and put a small piece of antler through it and roll it across the ground and the puppies get excited because the ball moves around a lot and they still kind of get the texture and the smell of the antler and then they, they soon graduate to a small piece of antler like a four pointer or a small six point off of a year and a halfer and you know short tosses and the puppy brings it back but what I wanted to uh, sort of build on is the fact that they use the reward based program when the puppy brings the antler back or the ball back and gives it to you and, and you're pleased and the dog's done a good job they, they make a sound with either a clicker or you use a word that the, that's going to be very unusual that the dog won't hear all the time. And I uh, actually, I use the word excellent when I was training Bell because that's just a word that you don't use on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, when you're talking to your dog. Good girl, excellent, good job, good job. See, she put it in the hand and she heard that word. Hey, and look at her eyes, look how intent she is on that. You want to go get it again? Girl, good girl. Excellent, way to go. That's my girl. How about that? <laughs> good girl, way to go, girl. Well, it is Saturday, March the 5th, and we are down in New Haven, Illinois, which is the about as far southeast in the bottom of Illinois as you can get down here in the river bottoms of the convergence of the Little and Big Wabash River at a good friend of mine, Matt Duffy's Country Lodge. He runs an outfitting business here for, for obviously for deer hunters. I met Matt years ago uh, through the QDMA at the national conventions and we've been very good friends ever since. And this is really a great tradition coming down here every year and bringing Belle, you know, she kind of is uh, a, a big reason that a lot of people are interested in joining in on the shed hunt just to watch the dog work and we try to do this hunt every year um, last year was the exception because the river got up so high most of his ground that he controls and hunts on was underwater on some places you know four or five feet of water and this year old man river tried to do the same thing as you can kind of see there over over my back shoulder that uh, that water out there is that's normally dry dry ground. We're probably a, at least a quarter mile from the river here and, it, and the water's up in these bottoms. Now, the interesting thing about that is the deer obviously are gonna seek the high ground once that water starts to come in here. And if the river times this right with the, with the shed of the antlers, all those deer are packed in really small pockets of cover up here on, this, on these high ridges just off the river. Put them both down by her. Sure. Woo. Good girl, Bill. Dang, that's an old one too. Good job. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I see you hung up in the tree. I found two. That one stuck in the tree. I would have never seen it. She backed up whenever she was jumping on this one. That one kicked her in the back and scared her. Hey Tom, Tom Paxton, I, don't, in the I don't remember seeing a big I never, seven, do you? I never saw this deer. That's a match set. Yep. Look at that. Good. That's an old, old deer. Man, that's beautiful. Just a little bitty bit of chewing going on. Good job, Bell. Here, here. The cool Girl thing here. about finding sheds, you know what made it through the year? Answers a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, boys! Hey, what we got? Match set. Good one. We've been covering this cornfield that Matt's been seeing a lot of the deer wintering here and feeding in this cornfield. How many of the night sometimes out here? 150. 150 deer off in this field that we just covered. 
So we're just coming down this draw on these little hardwood humps in here, these little high ridges that are nice and dry and the sun's shining in here on a, you know, on the afternoon, these deer are just laying in this, these warm leaves and soaking up that sunshine. No, no need to go far from the food if they don't have to. So we've already found this is the third antler right here on this little fifth of an acre, little knob. So very cool. It's just what you would expect. And since all the water is up behind Matt's camp and the river bottoms there, a lot of these deer are up here on this high ground right now. So we're, we're unable to get into some of the areas that we want to, but nonetheless, the deer are concentrated on these high spots. So that helps us out too. Smells it. Here we go. Good girl. Good girl, Bell. You know, here it is, middle of March, and uh, this is something we try to schedule in Matt's area down here in southern Illinois about that same time every year. But uh, a lot of guys get started, in my opinion, too soon um, when they're out thinking about walking their properties and going into their bedding areas and some of their sanctuaries that they don't go into at other times of the year. Some guys are in there as early as January, and this is a matter of opinion, but in, in the Midwest, I really don't start till after Valentine's Day, February the 14th. And the reason is, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of bucks carrying antlers beyond that time. And if you're in there walking through your sanctuaries and some of those spots that you reserve and wait for shed season to go into, um, you know those mature bucks don't take very many intrusions before they'll vacate and possibly not come back. The worst thing in the world is you could do is get in there and push those bucks off your property and have them drop on your neighbors. So I know you're anxious and wanting to get started, but a little bit of patience at that time of the year can really go a long way for you. So you're, you're setting up um, Hopefully from a distance or through through your trail cameras, you're watching your deer feeding in the areas that you know that they're in those late season food sources. They're not gonna be far from those bedding areas unless they're being bumped around. So think about south facing slopes, thick areas of course, up above uh, uh, wet areas. They wanna have some elevation where they can see, smell, and hear and have escape routes. But typically those spots are on south facing slopes where they can absorb that late season sun coming in, warming them up and uh, a short track to the food sources. The exception is if there are none nearby and they've got to go a long way, well then you just know those travel routes and those corridors. The next couple days here at Matt's, we're gonna be concentrating on cut corn fields, cut bean fields where he's been seeing these large herds of deer basically yarding up in big numbers. And again, we've talked about the floodwaters pushing them up here on the higher ground. This cover that we're talking about covering here for as far as walking, is not big blocks of timber. We're talking about draws and ravines that are basically fingers that work their way out into, the, into these crop fields. And really there's gonna be a lot of deer packed into a small area. This may not be the case where, where you're at, but here in the Midwest, especially here where we're at, at Matt's property, we're gonna be walking these narrow draws and these fringe areas this little warm season grass field right here, there's deer bedding in here, it's high and dry, it's warm, they're, they're getting the sun. This is a great spot to cover for, for sheds. Um, but once again, those thickets, south facing slopes, areas close to food, of course where you're seeing the deer in the food plots. If you're not seeing any deer feeding in those areas, probably not gonna have much luck looking for sheds on those adjoining cover areas. So keep that in mind when you're making your plans for getting out and going after them. Okay, so obviously I got the my, the duffel bag out of the backpack and she knows it's time to hunt shed but watch this wait what watch when she sees this hey bell you want to find a shed you want to find a shed oh yeah hey you want to go get this shed huh you want to go get it come on close good girl yes girl out of way good girl excellent good job good job See, she put it in the hand and she heard that word. Hey, and look at her eyes. Look how intent she is on that. You want to go get it again? Good girl. Good girl. Excellent. Way to go. That's my girl. How about that? 